to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul lifting messages, faith based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Uh, I don't want us to be careless about our approach tonight. Let your heart be open because the truth that you are about to hear will change you. Galatians chapter 2 verse 2, the apostle was speaking. He said, I went up by revelation. I went up by revelation, not just by desire. It takes more than desire. It takes more than sincerity to reign in life. Our victory in life is upon the strength of the mysteries of the kingdom that we understand. So every time we are gathered before him, I like you to know that that is the time to not just hear the word like scripture being quoted but an understanding of the principles of the kingdom hallelujah the word of god represents his wisdom his idea about everything in life when explained when understood when received and mixed with faith there is no power in existence that can stop a performance hallelujah so it's important for our hearts to be open and the second thing that we have to do tonight is that as you listen to the word of god open up your spirit most especially along the area where you are trusting god to see the word manifest some of us are fine with other areas the bible says naaman was a great man he was the captain of the syrian army but so when it came to warfare when it came to his rulership he was okay but his health there was an attack upon his health so as you listen to the word of god pay attention to the area that concerns you hallelujah praise the lord i want to welcome again everyone especially those who have come from far all our lovely people from um, university of abuja wave your hands god bless you wow wow let's honor them let's bless them thank you your life will never be the same in the name of jesus you will carry strange dimensions of grace and go back with it hallelujah one of the the principal advocacies of this ministry is the understanding that until a man encounters god please listen until you have a personal encounter with the god of the bible your christian experience is barren useless deceitful and destructive now listen I chose my words very intelligently. Barring, useless, deceitful, and then ultimately destructive. Because the danger of approaching spiritual things without a true encounter is that we will have a form of godliness. Hallelujah. But then we will deny its power. We will have a lot of concepts that we believe came from the Bible with no corresponding grace to demonstrate their validity so with time our christian experience will become a mockery on ourselves because we will make bold claims about a god we do not know talk audaciously about a kingdom we do not understand and attempt to to live by principles we do not fully grasp none of these things will produce results in our lives then at the end we'll find out that our faith is the same with those who never sought God from the beginning so it is important that as we seek 
to rise to levels of strength and grace in the spirit our approach must be according to patterns hallelujah one of the things again that we teach in this place um, are the mysteries of the kingdom i am absolutely convinced that the growth and the level of leadership and excellence of every believer is tied not just to his knowledge of god but his comprehension of the mysteries of the kingdom you hear me say this all the time the mysteries of the kingdom hold the key to dominion in this kingdom there is no other way of exercising kingdom dominion hallelujah whether it is prosperity whether it is working in the anointing of the holy spirit whether it is leadership influence whatever system of the kingdom you want to approach they function by laws everybody say laws and um, all that we do in this place is number one to keep progressing in our encounter the knowledge of the person Jesus and then to understand the principles of the kingdom and then to release an impartation grace upon us to be able to demonstrate that these things we believe are not just stories so when you come for koinonia you expect an encounter with the person christ that encounter has nothing to do with my teaching while i am teaching christ is revealing himself to people are we together now then the principles of the kingdom the keys that produce stars and champions in the kingdom and then an impartation a transference of grace the implication of that is that the transference is what is responsible for activating possibilities in your life that you have not seen that result in your life does not mean it's not available it says you will arise and shine when your light comes hallelujah so expect encounters expect revelation understanding accurate dispensing of the principles of god and the goal of the teaching of the principles of god is to do three things number one to challenge our paradigms our understanding to influence our convictions to the end that we lay aside every understanding that is not consistent with the patterns of the kingdom if the word of god cannot gain ascendance to a point where it challenges your understanding and corrects something you know i have so much passion for the understanding of the word of god because in my opinion it is god's justice and mercy to remedy for the inadequacies that came with our background so i may have had a background that was not very very favorable polygamous family perhaps or a family that has been ravaged by witchcraft and all of that and an option was never given to me to choose whether i want to be part of that system or another now when the word of god comes it leaves you with a choice to correct faulty foundations and set a new course for yourself your children the generation that will come after you or continue in that error and perish hallelujah the bible says there remained a rest for the people of god hebrews chapter 4 right began to talk about the rest they are the people of god but there is still a dimension of rest they are yet to enter and he says let us therefore labor to enter that rest hallelujah so let your let your attention be very intentional you must commit yourself i was very touched when i got information that these gentlemen and ladies were coming all the way from abuja they came all the way with their boss you know came to pay the price for an encounter that's called commitment it's more than desire it's called commitment are we together and um first timothy chapter 4 when you read from verse 14 down to 16 
he says meditate on these things what things the truths that have been taught you meditate on these things then he says give yourself wholly not half-heartedly wholly to them he says that your profiting will appear unto men that means your profiting will never appear unto men until there is a level of commitment are we together now yes commitment has always been one of the keys to mastery when you commit yourself you commit your potentials your time your resources and then your results will be commensurate to the commitment hallelujah faith is the name given to your partnership with god as far as the delivery of your expectations are concerned there is a partnership there is a role that you have to play he said good master what must i do to be saved it is within your power to save me but what is my role what must i do to be saved hallelujah scripture says if ye be willing and obedient then he says you will eat the good of the land the good will not come to you just because you have desire there must be willingness there must be obedience there is a path you either follow that path or you remain where you are he says ask for the ancient path you don't have to create one there is ask for the ancient paths hallelujah I teach you these truths because I want your life to produce results. You see, we do not serve God just because of results. However, at a point in your Christian experience, these results validate your pursuit, they motivate you, and they serve as consolations to your Christian experience. When Jesus saw the fig tree without fruit, he cursed it. He said, no man eats from you from hence and it withered so when a believer's life becomes an episode of failure after failure defeat after defeat pain after pain tragedy after tragedy there is need to not just probe your relationship with the lord jesus christ but probe your understanding of the systems of the kingdom because the operation of god is systemic there are systems everybody say systems say one more time systems there is the governmental system of the kingdom it is the dimension of the operation of the kingdom that is responsible for allotting rankings and responsibility is God's system of authority is the system of God that is responsible for promotion responsible for the distribution of offices is his governmental system there is the economic system of the kingdom that is responsible for the allotment of the welfare of the citizens so you can excel in an understanding of a dimension and be unfruitful in another dimension are we together you can be an excellent preacher yet be a very terrible father a terrible husband are we together you can tap into the dimension of the spirit that is responsible for success and achievement and yet fail as far as your personal spiritual growth is with God you can be anointed by tapping into the principles that open the gates of the anointing but then crash eventually because you have not been open to the dimension that brings in you the character to sustain that anointing so it's not only important to open yourself to one dimension of the kingdom you must study the systems of the kingdom there's no magic about excelling in this kingdom it's an intentional formula an encounter first please listen in this order never begin to study the systems of the kingdom without an encounter with the person Christ that's what leads to mysticism and Scientology are we together an attempt to explore the principles of the kingdom outside of an encounter with the person Christ in this kingdom everything revolves around Jesus Christ listen if at any point you are found 
attempting to explore anything about the kingdom outside of the supervision of Jesus Christ, you are already in error. And that's what we call witchcraft. It says, oh foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? So up front, before we explore the mysteries of the kingdom, I need to balance this because there is such appetite, especially for we, the younger people, there is such appetite for exploring not just the mysteries of the kingdom, but anything mystical. We, we have grown progressively in this craze for anything that is not widespread information. So, the understanding that all power belongs to God has erroneously authorized many people to now explore anything. So we read zodiac signs, we read uh, the books of Moses, we read all kinds of the um, and um, um, astrology and all kinds of ancient Babylonian Scientology. We mix everything together because we believe in our folly that we can get the correct part of the information and then by our strength balance it are we seeing now so we are attempting to explore realities in the kingdom outside of the direction and the supervision of christ this is the difference between what i'm teaching you and a lot of junks that a lot of people try to teach so there is obsession when they come out in the morning and they see that the cloud is red they want to give a a an astrological and then spiritual explanation so that obsession for mysticism every time the word of the, of god is dispensed with simplicity those kinds of people reject it the moment the word is too simple they say no i need something deep meaning i need something surrounded with a lot of mysticism and oftentimes we men of God use mysticism to cover for our foundational inferiority and complex we come from backgrounds where we have hardly been believed and so we find succor on the strength of possessing informations that are not public so when we dispense these informations in our minds we feel we are respected on the strength of our mysticism so we pride ourselves the more mystical we look, the happier we are with ourselves. That's not the way the kingdom works. Are we together? When Jesus came, when he taught the word, children understood him. Adults understood him. Intellectuals understood him. If this was designed to reach the whole world, then there must be a system of simplicity that surrounds its operation. Let me tell you the truth. Over 70% of the informations that are being promoted in church are unnecessary for the growth and the excellence of a believer's life trust me the more you know christ the more you see how useless certain informations are that we punish ourselves to believe that until we know these things he said that i may know him so it starts with knowing him then the power of his resurrection the realities that accompany that person the beginning the foundation of a christian journey is not access to mysteries it will lead you into occultism the foundation of a christian's journey is an encounter with the person christ not the kingdom the person of jesus christ not the holy spirit the person of Jesus Christ, not an angel, not the 24 elders, not the four living creatures. None of these things have the ability to give you, it's like a compass. So, the, you know, when, when you stand to measure your weight or whatever, it is calibrated to zero. And it must be calibrated to zero for you to have a correct measurement. That's how it is. Jesus is the beginning he shows you the correct pathway to start your journey. Now the trouble is, there are so many people who teach a lot of mysticisms in the body of Christ without a personal revelation of the person Christ. That was the mistake of Isaiah. From chapter 1 to 5, he was teaching, prophesying, dispensing the realities of the kingdom. 
But in chapter 6 verse 1, the Bible says, In the year that King Uzziah died, he said, I, Isaiah, saw the Lord. When he saw the Lord, at once, he no longer was interested in ministry. Can you imagine? A man who he that told was happy to be a prophet. He said, woe is me. I am undone. In other words, I need to reset this spiritual curriculum altogether. Please hear me, Koinonia. Hear me and be wise. Do not ever make a mistake of thinking God will grant you grace and access to people on the strength of mysticism. Are we together? That you can bring a lot of mysticism and explain how Moses learned the Babylonian intelligence and explain all of those things and come up with archaeological intelligence none of these things in themselves sustain the ability to produce effect you see we do these things and we mock ourselves in church the sick still remain sick the oppressed still remain oppressed in fact at the end of our teaching those who were once confident that they love god do not even know what they believe again no that's not the way it works there should be a level of certainty he said, I know whom I have believed. I'm not confused. I didn't meet an angel. I know whom I believe. He said, and I am persuaded. Hallelujah. I watch preachers, and, and you know I love the body of Christ. But then I watch preachers sadly. And I see how a number of people become gullible. This craze and passion for mysticism any pdf material anything at all that can make you mystical is we pride ourselves around it are we together then we come up with all kinds of teachings the title of my teaching is the reason why michael is called michael now i'm not i'm not being cynical but it's funny how we waste people's time and demons laugh at our stupidity as they watch us do the things we do. Jesus said this when he was sending the disciples. He said, heal the sick. Cast out devils. Raise the dead. Cleanse the lepers. He said, preach the kingdom. Is that true? He sent them with a specific knowledge. You see, there are all kinds of information on earth. But not all of them are relevant for our spiritual growth and development. There is a dimension of spiritual knowledge called forbidden knowledge. It is not within the curriculum that is given to our dispensation. In other words, attempting to access it is a waste. Just like there are certain kinds of knowledge that our dispensation is not yet qualified to receive. When this is done, then we will have access to eat of that tree of life. It wasn't to satisfy hunger. It was to reveal a dimension of Christ. The great prophet of God, William Branham, I honor him so much even in his death. Towards the end of his life, fell into this error I'm trying to correct for you. William Branham stepped into a dimension of the prophetic that only few people have stepped in. It's called the creative dimension of prophecy. Where he would sit in a forest and watch squirrels be created out of thin air and walk just like Elisha the prophet. But then towards the end, he became philosophical in his approach towards God and he started coming up with a lot of teachings there are people today called the Brahamites those who subscribe to the ideology of William Branham a great man but towards the end of his life he brought a lot of erroneous teachings are we together now yes there's no point telling us some of those teachings but then it was him that began to propose how that Cain was the son of the serpent. He gave a teaching that the serpent also slept with Eve. So Adam came, I mean Abel came from Adam and Cain came from the serpent, you see. That was his idea. And there are all kinds of other teachings. Great men and women of God around the world but attempting to come up with a lot of teachings that 
by the time you come around those teachings they will make you diabolic you will no longer see sense in the laws of god it's as if there is a level of haphazardness and discretion in the dealings of god no it's not that way there is a formula that defines the dealings of god with man hallelujah tonight i want to teach you something that has blessed me i've taught these principles across in our external ministrations but i just realized that i've not done that teaching here in the house and the holy ghost began to put it in my heart that i should teach it and so i'm going to be teaching us tonight in the name of the lord jesus christ matthew 13 verse 11 please hallelujah in your name we will rise i don't know you reign on earth. In your name, we will rise. I don't know. You reign on earth. Sing it as a prophecy. In your name, I will rise. I don't know. One more time. It's in your name we will rise. I don't know. You reign on time. Matthew 13, verse 11. I like us to read one to read he answered and said unto them because it is given sorry it's not projected we really apologize let's take it again one to read 13 verse 11 because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven but unto them it is not given change the word mystery to secrets ready read it again one to read please look up these truths are called secrets not because god does not want them known are we together the idea of the principles of the kingdom being called secrets has nothing to do with god's um God's one thing to hide them from people. No. They are called secrets only because the operation of those principles will require the presence of the Holy Spirit to help you understand. He said it is given to you in the kingdom. You who have encountered Christ. It has been given unto you. It's part of the privileges of submitting to the Lordship of Christ. To know have access to the mysteries of the kingdom he says but to them who are the them those who are without those who have willfully ignored the person of jesus christ he said to them that access has not been given but to you it has been given say in the name of jesus say it again in the name of jesus it has been given unto me to know to understand to comprehend the mysteries of the kingdom it has been given to me to understand the systems of the kingdom and i will understand i will master these laws and i will reign in life listen ladies and gentlemen i give you a guarantee please hear me i give you a guarantee if you pay attention to these truths your life will look like a god upon the earth believe me 
the laws of the kingdom are not emotional they don't have any tribal affiliations or sentiments to them you're not going to say because i'm a northerner or because i'm from the south or east no god is no respecter of persons any and everyone at all who will open up himself or herself and pay attention to these truths will rise like an edifice out of any kind of obscurity in the name of jesus christ there are six laws that have changed my life six principles that i have taught and shared there are so many but in recent times i found myself advocating these things and helping the body of christ understand these principles i'm going to run through them very quickly and then we'll pray hallelujah three things will happen to you as i teach number one is that you will have all kinds of encounters number two the lord will grant you understanding i sincerely pray for you that you will have understanding the bible says and open he their understanding that they may understand the scripture meaning until god opens your understanding you will keep hearing stories hallelujah and then number three the supply of grace will come upon your life that ability of the holy spirit that enhances performance may that be your portion in the name of jesus for your glory be lifted high be lifted high be lifted high for your glory be lifted high be lifted high be lifted high for your glory hallelujah number one is the law that is responsible for unusual grace please listen in the life of a man what principle makes men so powerful i have met men in my life and i've heard of others i have followed others who are extremely powerful there is a strong manifestation of the hand of god and the grace of god upon their lives and i have seen others who love god sincerely but i've not seen as much grace is it just an election of grace or is there a pathway a man can follow to the end that you will access heavy dimensions of the hand of god there is there is and I want to show you. Praise the Lord. It's called the law of complete surrender. Please write it down. Complete surrender. This is the first mystery in the kingdom I want to teach you. The secret of unusual grace. Heavy anointings upon men. Men who have access to territories. There is a mystery that governs that operation. It's called complete surrender. The source of my strength, now you. The strength of my life, now you. My hope and my joy, now you. My confidence, now you. You're the source of my strength, now you. The strength of my life, now you. My hope and my joy, now you. My confidence, now you. So I. Nicodemus said, Rabbi, we know that thou art a man sent from God. He said, for no man can do these things except God be with him. Except God be with him. What you see in this ministry is the finger, the very finger of God. And we give him all the praise. 
and to him be all the glory hallelujah matthew chapter 16 let's continue matthew 16 verse 25 matthew 16 verse 25 i'm establishing the law of complete surrender matthew 16 verse 25 For whosoever, now listen, I want to establish a law. Whosoever will save his life shall what? Lose it. But whosoever will lose his life, listen, for my sake, not for foolishness, not as a result of drinking beer and a car knocks you down. Whosoever, to show how much he's passionate about me, will lose his life he says he will gain it please listen in this kingdom we rise up by losing things you do not gain things and rise the extent to which you rise in power the extent to which you rise in grace is called the sacrifice of death death to yourself Death to your ambitions. Death to your appetites and desires. Death to a life of sovereignty outside of the Christ. The more you die to yourself, the more your flesh is crucified at the cross, the more you are able to tap into untold dimensions of spiritual power. Listen. Every man defines the limit of his spiritual possibility as far as accessing the power of God is concerned. I may love God. You may love God. Listen, the difference between both of us is not just the election of grace alone, but our individual willingness to lay down what defines relevance outside Christ for the sake of it says this one thing i do forgetting everything that is behind it didn't say forgetting bad things everything jesus became lord and christ by his ability to lay down his glory his reputation philippians 2 from verse 5 to 10. it says let this mind be in you which was also in christ jesus right who although he was equal with God, he did not consider it robbery. For equal in power. But, he laid aside that glory, that grace, and became a man. That would have been enough humiliation. And then the Bible says, he now died the death of a sinner. The death being a cause. Then it says, wherefore, on the strength of losing his life his personal relevance when jesus came to the earth it was enough for him to say look i am everything but even being humiliated as a man he still submitted to the governing authority of his father he said i can of my own do nothing the word of god speaking the word that created the heavens and the earth he said, I can of my own do nothing. He said, as I see my father do, sacrifice. So many of us may never get to this realm of power, although we may fast, although we may pray. It's not just by fasting and prayer. There is a point you must come to where you will say like John in John 3 31 that I may decrease listen that he may increase there are some of you looking at me here if you had one tenth of the results that God has blessed this ministry with God will never see your face again you see as I'm speaking to you make sure you are hearing the Lord talk to you absolute surrender where you have no desire whatsoever to build titles for yourself god is my witness i've said this for years and i'm still saying it i have no desire whatsoever to build an empire 
Joshua Selman, Apostle Joshua Selman, the great man of God, the anointed man of God. No, I have only one desire to see his kingdom come and that my life becomes a mirror, not showing myself, but revealing an ability greater than me. Over 70% of those who have been blessed by this ministry have never seen me face to face. Some of you, this is the first time you are seeing me face to face. You know why? Because it has always been my desire for Christ and him alone to be exalted. As a person, I'm useless and unnecessary to your spiritual growth. I am only necessary on the strength of number one, the election of grace and the privilege of representing the person, Christ. That's where I draw my relevance from. I'm aware of that. So at no point in my Christian experience and my journey in ministry will I ever declare independence wanting people to know me outside of the Christ. But for many of us, hidden in our fastings, hidden in our prayers, hidden in our night vigils, hidden in our attending seminars and reading books, is such an appetite for for being honored and recognized to an extent that it doesn't matter whether christ is glorified or not we have such desire to be celebrities in the kingdom you are not a celebrity by writing songs and producing albums and doing the way they do in the world you are a celebrity to the degree to which you die and no man sees you. They only see the Christ. It's a realm called Galatians 2.20. I have been crucified with Christ. Please listen. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ that lives in me. It says, and the life that I live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Please hear me. Quit this desire for vain glory, self-glorification. I'm not saying do not desire honor. It is part of the system of the kingdom to honor those who represent Christ well. He said, let them that rule well be given double honor. Are we together? But if that is the foundation of your pursuit, and then you now write songs because you want to be a celebrity, and show Frank Edwards and the rest that they are not the only ones. You know, and sometimes we men of God teach these things sincerely in church. But we do not realize we are destroying people. In an attempt to motivate people and spur them towards excellence. We try to give them an idea that there is an inner giant within them. That giant is outside Christ. Wake that sleeping giant. And what many people mean is, look, you can rise outside of partnership with Christ. Only know these laws. The foundation of the relevance of the Christian is tied to Christ. Don't forget this. At no point in your life will your independence from God favor you. At no point. In John 21, Jesus was speaking to Peter and he gave him what I define to be the hallmark of spiritual maturity. He said, when you are young, come. When you are young in the kingdom, you are allowed to go and do everything you want to do. But the older and the more mature you become, he says, someone will hold your hands and will take you even to places you do not want. Dependence is the hallmark of maturity in the spirit. Independence and rebellion are communications of self-centeredness and carnality the more matured you become in the kingdom the more your hands will have to be held submission defines maturity in the kingdom thank you hallelujah i have learned this law and it has blessed me never you see a man who has donated himself to god and think that man is at a disadvantage you are joking except if the man did it religiously or he did it carnally or in the course of his journey he was weary and did not finish i have not found one man from scripture 
who left all to commit himself to the purposes of Christ listen I have not found one man who took his life as a trophy and said Lord find glory in this life and was not relevant when God called Abraham a traditional worshiper in a land called Or of the Chaldeans in Genesis chapter 12 he called Abraham and he said I will make you a great nation and all of that and then he says come out of your father's house in other words come into a life come into a life of dependence and at the end he turned a man to a nation the same thing he did for Gideon the same thing he did for Moses the same thing he will do to any man you've heard me say it and I will repeat it tonight the Lord told me years ago he said if you will let men see me there is nothing I will not give you because in God's mind it doesn't make any difference whether the virtues are with him or with me the allegiance does not change so God can commit to you what is in his hands because he knows that it is still his own in your hands this attitude of ownership you will never hear me say my ministry no my ministry these are till today you've heard me say it again and again i am and, and a lot of people have felt bad i still feel my body still shakes to look at someone and call my son in the gospel a lot of people have said you've never called me son you've never called me daughter because to call someone son or daughter it it, it even looks like I'm, I'm i'm embarrassing myself because compared to where god wants me to be i'm only a step out of the cave yet some of you this is the hallmark of your ministry there is such appetite to surround people with everybody including your father and mother and everybody they are your sons and daughters and we pride ourselves in it this is my church of 20 members they are all my children I'm showing you a principle that will change your life in everything my business so you pay the bills and it kills you my business he said let it not be Deuteronomy chapter 18 that when thou art built these houses from verse 14 down to 18 right and you have done this and that that you say my power and the strength of my hands has given me this he said but thou shall remember the Lord your God why because you can forget let me tell you success can erode the place of god in the life of a man it's god speaking to us oh god i want power i want the miraculous grace you know i see people i receive all kinds of text messages from people i remember i think two weeks ago one gentleman came uh, was it two weeks or so he came from i don't know which city he sent me a text he said apostle i'm coming to draw everything you carry that he wants a, a quad i think it's um, four is what quadruple right portion and i laughed as i said, look at look at this boy just kidding himself because you think you can inherit sacrifice you can't inherit death it's, it's a path he said verily verily i say unto you except a wheat falls to the ground that's not a gift that's a reward except a corn of wheat falls to the ground and dies it abides alone i can release grace upon you but i cannot give you my secret place i cannot give you the priority i can only pray that grace be supplied and help you understand my convictions but it will be up to you to say lord this is my job my wife my children my ministry my career i love all of them but i push all of them behind to make you first not just that find a place and and wage yourself in the midst of these things so you have your career usually money is the first money then wife then children then husband then god then politics then something he's just somewhere in the list the jealousy of God will fight anything above him in your life. Even if he's the one who gave you, he will fight it. It is his idea that everything in your life only finds relevance to the degree to which it is behind him. 
So your gifts and talents are only relevant to the degree to which he is above them. Your prosperity is only relevant to the degree to which he is above them. Is God speaking to us? Open your mouth and pray in one minute and say, Lord, I make you my priority. Please pray. My priority, not an instrument of relevance. Lord, you are my priority. Are you praying, Koinonia? My priority, not money, not fame, not marriage, not children, not education. They are all important, don't get me wrong. But they are useless the moment Christ is not above them. Believe me, sooner or later you will learn the vanity of life outside of Christ. He, is, he does not add taste to life. He gives it meaning. Jesus Christ is not the salt of the earth. Jesus Christ is life. He does not add taste to your life. No. Jesus Christ does not add. He introduces life to you. He said this is the testimony. That God has given us eternal life. Then he says and this life is in his son. He who has the son has eternal life. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen. Never give God your remaining time. You spend your time looking for money, looking for wife, husband, children. Then eventually you feel guilty because usually you will not get any much result. So you now run to Christ and say, okay, God, I know that you are not happy with me. Let me give you one day. No. It's not about giving God one day of a retreat. God does not want one day. He doesn't even want once a week. He wants everything. If he's not Lord of all, then everything that stands his way is your God. Praise the Lord. Is God speaking to us? The law of absolute surrender. Jeremiah 29, please. 13 and 14. What are the benefits of God being a priority in the life of a man? Jeremiah 29, when you read from verse 13, it says... And ye shall seek me, listen, and find me when you seek me with all your heart. Sincerely speaking, please hear me. Look up, look up. Brothers and sisters, hear me. This half-hearted commitment towards God that we do one leg in and one leg out. When it's favorable, I love him. When it's not favorable, I don't love him. You will never find the God I serve that way. You must give him everything completely. It can't be God and something else. No. The, the might and the jealousy of God puts him in a class all by himself. Are we together? He says you will find me only when you seek me with all your heart. With all your heart. With all your heart. The problem is we are not seeking God with all our hearts. We are seeking what he can give. A number of us are gathered here. If I begin to prophesy now and I say, oh, stand up. Your name is this, this and that. Many of us will be happy and say, thank God I came for today's service. You see, because that's really what you want. Man of God, what is my problem? What do I do about it? So we have created all kinds of systems in the body of Christ to cover our half-hearted following God. Are we together? We follow God half-heartedly. When demons start oppressing us, we look for a man quickly and just drop money. And because the man needs the money, he will not rebuke you. He will now collect it and say, go, it is done. It's not done. Let me tell you, it is not done. You will go back and those spirits will oppress you. Because this, what you are giving is bribe. There is no amount of seed you give a man of God that will cover the place that only your total commitment to God are we together? Yes. And pastors, stop collecting money from people and watching their spiritual lives go down 
and tell them go it is done i'm telling you now if anybody has told you that it is not done there is a lot more to do sow your seed bless a man of god but don't come to bribe a man to say oh, man of god pray for me me too i am so busy you know we are not like you we really don't have that time to pray if you don't have the time to pray you don't have the time to live if you don't have the time to study the word and know god then please Pray that your life will be given to someone who is serious with God so that at least maybe you can go to heaven or so. But when you are in this earth, you live by the systems of the king. Hallelujah. Nothing irritates me like seeing young people who are not passionate about God. You see a guy stand and then you hear him talk and there is nothing kingdom in his conversation. No love for God. Man of God, how are you? May God bless you in this missionary journey. He doesn't even know. He, he's trying to use Christian languages to look spiritual. He says, as you are helping us in this vineyard, in this world. Where did you keep what? Nothing in the kingdom has altered your communication. But they know every song. They know every show. They know everything. That's the person saying he doesn't have time. They know every football team right they know the winners of uefa champions league they are hoping that cashless uh, mastercard cashless will take them to the finals of uefa champions league they are hoping all these things will happen and they have no knowledge of god tell me one scripture where god said he will prosper you you don't know but you are there advocating for a man who will never tell you thank you you see we have to straighten our thinking please hear me god is not a herbalist a herbalist is not concerned about relationship he's only concerned about practices you don't even need to know the name of the herbalist he just says turn around drop your chicken drop your goat drop the money go it is done you don't know his name but when you come to god and say god i stretch my hands he pushes your hand away and says give me your heart let's start with your heart before we talk about your hand hallelujah number two the second key secret of the kingdom i'll be sharing with you tonight we'll have to hurry up it's found in proverbs chapter 23 verse 7 please let's hurry up proverbs 23 verse 7 i'll read it for as he thinketh in his heart the word heart there can also be translated mind so is he for as he thinketh in his heart please look up so is he there is a law in the kingdom that realities are first formed within and from the realm of the spirit before they find expression in the physical please listen that your life is only a looking mirror and when you want to alter the course of your life you don't alter it by changing things physically you alter it by changing something within are we together imagine that this projector is a big mirror and you saw yourself and maybe there was dust on your face and then you are trying to chuck your hand in the mirror to clean the dust is that wisdom that's the same thing that you are doing when you try to correct something in your life physically without correcting it from your mind because everyone every one of you under the sound of my voice is a slave to your conditioning your paradigm your ideology are we together now i'm doing what i'm doing right now because there are certain sets of convictions that make me believe that this is the way to live a relevant life are we together when a gentleman sacks his jeans down and holds ego in his hand it's not just that there is a spirit oppressing him there is a mindset are we together there is an understanding within him that defines success to him and lets him know that if you want to succeed these are the things you do so he's a slave you see the body is an obedient instrument the body will obey your convictions 100%. Your body will move you only in the direction of your convictions. 
sadly not your intentions so you may be hearing what i'm saying now you want to change but there is a conviction in you that would not allow you change listen this is why people remain poor this is why people remain sick this is why people remain failures they hear the word and they're ah i'm happy i've had this word but that was just their intention their true conviction is still what came from their village what took 20 years to become a stronghold in your mind is god speaking to us so when you come to the kingdom as the word of god is being taught you know what i'm doing to you there is a replacement going on in your mind are we together new ideas that are now consistent with the way of god are superimposing the ideas that came from culture the ideas that came from the our being victimized by reason of our post-colonial the side effect of being under the colonial rule that mindset of servitude as the word of god is coming is bringing new ideas and all of a sudden your concepts are changing you who would have been rebellious about the things of god now can sit down in church just like they gave the testimony our abuja people right how that someone who was not in the faith is now sitting down and burning for god three years ago that person had a conviction an ideology that informed him otherwise or her otherwise and now they found something you listen when you get born again the next assignment of the holy spirit is to take the principles of the word of god in partnership with your obedience and that there be a progressive replacement of wrong paradigms wrong ideologies are we together if you are smoking there is an understanding making you do it the issue is not to say stop smoking you cannot stop until the paradigm is changed and the spirit that keeps that paradigm effective leaves you when a man beats his wife something told him that's the way to keep your wife obedient and usually he would have interacted with people from his village and they said the way we, we have done this before you were born don't let ladies talk nonsense when they do anything beat the living daylight out of them do it once twice maybe three times or four and i'm telling you you have everything settled so you you are born again but you carry your village with you god wants to open you up to a beautiful life maritally but your village is interrupting it please i like you to make a commitment that you will have no loyalty to any mindset that is not of the Christ no matter how long you've held on to it when you come before the Lord you must lay it down in the name of Jesus Christ do you know why we resent ourselves and we hate our cultures I'll tell you why we hate people from different cultures because of what we think comes with the culture are we together a prevalent mindset so if I say a man from Plateau State or Kaduna State or Kogi State or Akwaibom or Lagos or an Igbo man, we associate these people with certain things ranging from irresponsibility to anger to loss for money to pride and so on and so forth to promiscuity. But those things are ideologies. They are conditionings. Listen, the kingdom is another culture greater than your culture you can choose to remain an evil man or become a citizen of the kingdom you can choose to remain a northerner together with the strings of irresponsibility associated with our territory or you can come into the kingdom and let this mind be in you which was also in christ jesus are we together conditioning so you love god but that mindset of being a champion is still eating you up so the moment you are in church and a man of god is preaching you try to outshine them that one is not god you are anointed but you are still a victim of a conditioning that you are only a celebrity when you are the only one doing what you are doing so you push every other person and make sure nobody has an, an opportunity to grow listen please hold on do you know 
that many of us pastors, some of the things we introduce to members that we brag about and make it look like it's the Holy Spirit that told us it's not the Holy Spirit. There is where the Holy Spirit stopped and our villages continued. But we mix everything and say it was the Holy Spirit. Are we together? I can be angry and call you stupid. And instead of accepting that, look, this, this one is a spirit. This is not the Holy Ghost. But I'll say, look, it's, it's just the zeal of the Lord. What do you expect? I have an apostolic anointing. Instead of being humble to admit. Are we together now? Yes. Or the moment God reveals to me that you have one million in your account. I'm supposed to pass. He didn't say I should talk to you. But something in my territory that, that stimulates an appetite for material gain. This one has nothing to do with God again. I took advantage of prophetic access and saw one million. And I'm drawn by my lust. Now you won't know because the atmosphere is heavy. People are falling under the anointing. So you assume it's God that is doing it. And I walk up to you and say, young man, stand up. You have one million. Like, Hi! You say, yes. Exactly one million. Yes. He came last week. Yes, go and send it to my account quickly. Now, listen. I will, I will be so bold about it. You will never believe it came from me. I'll say, look, don't think I'm looking for your money. Just go and do this thing for your own good. And the guy will run and transfer it. And I'll say, thank you, Jesus. Now, does that mean, it doesn't mean I don't love the Lord. But there is a mindset that is mixing with ministry. Are we together? And if it wants, it must change. That's why there are people who don't mind getting anything. You love God. But then eventually, when there are bills that need to be paid, you will create some kind of prophetic platform and say, where are so, 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 and so people who must do A and B and C? And we make it look like it was God. No. Those ministries are suffering because of their lack of understanding the financial principles of the kingdom. And they will have to manipulate a system to cover up for their lapse of not understanding one system of the kingdom. Please, I'd like you to pray for one minute and say, Lord, any conditioning in me that is responsible for my failure, no matter how long I've held on to it, let it go tonight. Please pray. Pray. I'm sharing with you principles that will change your life. Please pray. Some of you, that's why you may never enter a godly relationship. Any relationship you enter, you love God. You are tongue-talking. But there is an understanding you have about relationship, about marriage, that will never allow you to be in a meaningful relationship. Some of you do not have friends because there is a thinking, there is a paradigm. It came with your village. The validity, the lifespan of any good friend in your life is two weeks something you do will drive them away take responsibility and pray stop saying it's just demons pray and say lord i realize that your word says to guard my heart with all diligence for out of it proceeds the issues of life regardless of my village and my territory regardless of where i come from there is a behavioral pattern that is tied to inferiority. I have never realized that I'm behaving that way because there is a hidden sense of low esteem, low self-esteem. I have brought it into ministry. I have brought it into business. I have brought it into my home and it's destroying my home. Let it go in the name of Jesus. Lift your voice and pray. Some of us are very cynical. We are very critical. You criticize everybody. You are a sadist. Your communication is always on the negative. Take responsibility and accept tonight that there is a mindset that is making you behave that way. And cry to the Lord for change. Don't say we are all like that in our family. Pray. There is a mindset that keeps you greedy. There is a mindset that makes you not to be a giver. There is a mindset that makes it look like tithing is a gimmick from men of God to collect your money and you remain poor. There is a mindset 
that makes you think your entire finances will come from salary and is killing you right now pray and say lord any understanding any paradigm i have held on to that is not consistent with your path i i become disloyal to it tonight hallelujah number three proverbs chapter three verse five to seven is god blessing us already please lend these keys and use them and watch the mountains before you melt like wax before the fire hallelujah some years ago i found out listen that every time i had challenges in my life any kind of challenge it was difficult for me to manage it i didn't know what to do as a leader whenever i was faced between decisions very major decisions i didn't know how to manage some of the confusions that i experienced until i found what i'm about to teach you if you learn what i'm about to teach you now every time you are confused you will find your way out ready proverbs chapter 3 please from verse 5 learn this the third law the key to receiving divine strategies from god the key to receiving supernatural direction a way out of a, a situation that should eat you and destroy your life that when men say this is it there is no way out hear me people of god there is a way out if you know what to do it's found in proverbs chapter 3 from verse 5 to 7 and it says trust in the lord with all your heart right it says and lean not on your own understanding the next verse is where the key is in all your ways how many how many in all your ways it says acknowledge him what is the blessing behind that process and he shall direct <sighs> until that experience happens your path is crooked it says whenever you get to a point in your life where there is no way out humanly there is a key the key is to acknowledge him i know it looks simple until you apply it are we together let me tell you how to acknowledge someone i know that i've given this example but please say jimmy stand sir look at this if this guy is the ceo of a multi-billion dollar bank are we together and he has come in our midst right now and i want to introduce him listen let me show you how to acknowledge a man i would start something like this ladies and gentlemen in our midst today we are privileged to have a jimmy in 1998 he got award for most innovative entrepreneur in 1999 he got award for the most customer driven company in 2005 he go, i begin to list all his achievements listen are we together now and then i'll tell you look it's a privilege to have him here please everyone we cannot continue until we recognize this rare gem with a standing ovation celebrate this person i have acknowledged him let me tell you what that does it puts pressure on him to repeat what you just acknowledged are we together now i cannot say he got this award this award and i say please come and tell us good evening and then he comes up and blows his credentials have you seen people you honored come on stage and you see how they are under pressure to preserve the honor you have given them your honoring and acknowledging them put pressure on them to represent that's what you do to god so when i get to a crossroad where there is no way out and men say like david in psalm 3 he said many a day that rise up against me many a day that say where is his god all of a sudden you forget about the problem and you say where is the god that parted the red sea with his nostrils you are acknowledging him are we together you start listing the things he did that's what david did to goliath where is the god that delivered me from the bear 
Where is the God that delivered me from the lion? And he was putting pressure on the integrity of God. In other words, God, your name is about to go to the mud. And I am shouting it before men that you are the one that did it before. And all of a sudden, he shall make straight your path. That's what the Bible says. I show you a secret of endless victory. Because you see, as you rise, there are many people who will pray for your downfall. Not because they hate you. Your rise is equivalent to their failures. Because it kills every excuse. And so in their minds, they will be hoping things will go bad. To justify that your success is nothing special. And at a point, you will be at a crossroad. When you get to that point, then you will open your mouth and begin to worship him. And call him all kinds of names. It's a secret I've learned. I will shut the door for one hour, two hours. I'm just worshiping him. And say, Lord, I thank you. I remember at so, so, so time when you came through for me. I will sing of your mercies. I remember the day when I did not have five naira. Is it today that I need one million that you cannot give me? I'm acknowledging him. I, I mount pressure on his integrity. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. That's what you should do. You mount pressure on God's integrity by acknowledging him before the forces of darkness he healed you of hiv now cancer wants to destroy you and people say you know i've always suspected this person was not healed this koinonia people just come and lie on stage here hiv healed just like that as if we are stupid we went to school now cancer is eating you and you know humanly speaking that this cancer is progressing let me tell you how to deal with it forget about the cancer and go back and dance before God close your door call him all the names that will put pressure on him I call you healer your name is healer you are the healer to me I call you healer your name is healer healer you are and he you be listen when you mount pressure on him listen you know the way people behave sometimes we behave as if god you wrote an exam where you wrote nonsense and it came out a now you are in final year and your supervisor looks at you and says if i'm in this department you will not graduate and you are about to depress yourself no go and lock the door and say in hundred level where is the man that brought 3.5 for me regardless of this oh god listen i'm not motivating you i'm giving you a key to get out of confusion and make men swallow their words i pray you believe what i'm teaching you because a day will come you will need it are we together you are confused Three years no child and everybody is talking saying if you if you claim that you love God where is the child and then you sit down depressing yourself and say but God you serve Abba am I not serving you you will never get a miracle that way there is a law lean not on your own understanding it says in all your ways acknowledge 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 in one minute can you open your mouth and acknowledge him mention the things he has done in your life before please open your mouth i survived cancer in 99 i survived financial crisis in 2007 is it today i will lack food to eat where is the god of heaven if he gave me a husband will he not give me a child if he gave me a job will he not give me promotion if he granted me grace to graduate will he not give me a job if he gave me life will he not change my genotype from ss to aa pray acknowledge him before goliath my rent has expired 
by Friday if I don't pay they will throw me out Lord where are you last year at the dying minute my rent came I acknowledge you ah, yeah, 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 yeah. the mighty God you are the mighty God the great I am hallelujah hallelujah you are the mighty God you are the great I am Come on, acknowledge him before every trouble in your life. You are the mighty God, the great I am. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You are the mighty God, the great I am. Listen, when you grow in this law, there are some challenges you will not even pray about again. Because how do you start saying God is not faithful? When the challenges stand before you, there are too many testimonies to make you think about them. So what made you cry yesterday will no longer make you cry today. Listen, let me tell you, you know why men are bold in the kingdom? some of us are bold because we have gone through hell and high water i'm telling you there's nothing you can think about that we've not gone through so when it's like a man who has entered prison and came out entered prison came out entered prison then one day you tell him i'll take you to prison he'll just look at you and say you are joking go and ask your warder his name is philip ask him whether he knows joshua and at the end you have nothing listen satan thrives on your fear he knows that our memories are so short we forget too early he said bless the lord oh my soul and forget not his benefits please lift your voice in one minute to the shame of the devil and say lord you are faithful the marriage will still happen open your mouth and pray i will still be a landlord I will still hold my certificate. That job will still come. Kabarata shapata kata. Lekete preske lebaba. Supplies will come from heaven. Men may laugh at me, but there is a God that sits in heaven. Are you praying it's part of the meeting challenge your fear don't run away from it who are you down mountain where were you when god healed me i really want you to acknowledge him i really want you to acknowledge him Unchangeable, unchangeable God. Unchangeable, unchangeable God. Unchangeable God. Unchangeable, unchangeable God. Unchangeable God. Unchangeable, unchangeable God. Reliable God. Reliable. listen open your mouth in one minute call that challenge by name and tell it i will walk upon you come on go ahead and pray don't be afraid call it by name look it in the eye and say barrenness one day you will be my testimony Sha 
Oh yes, oh yes. It doesn't come to kill. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you. Please give God a shout of praise and sit down. God bless you. Please be seated. Hallelujah. Take this key. Go back with it. And what challenges fear you? Fear you. Because you will find out that nothing is as big as it looks. Let me tell you, I've gone through too many things in my life to tell you no challenge can kill by itself until you direct the gun and shoot it at yourself. I have confidence in you, Jesus. I have confidence in you, Savior. I have confidence in you. Anytime and any day, I have confidence in you. Jesus, Jesus, I have confidence in you, Savior. I have confidence in you. Let me tell you something. The next time you see men laughing at you, don't worry. There is already a scripture. It says, Rejoice not over me, my enemies. Rejoice not over me. Rejoice not over me, my enemies. He said, Do I fall? Yet I will rise. There is a mechanism in the kingdom that remedies for it. Aya. Jesus died. But he only died for three days. He had resurrected. Others were talking about his death. On his way to Emmaus, they were busy discussing the man who died. And he said, gentlemen, I'm already, I've, I've arisen. This is outdated curriculum. That's how some people will sit down while they are discussing and saying, ah, this lady now, now wow, I don't know. While they are discussing, your text will just come. My God has done it again. The miracle worker has done it again. Please sit down. You see, it is this understanding that can make two people come again. Anybody come? It is this understanding come that can make two people walk with me, walk through life. Someone stands at a point where people say he cannot cross. And another person continues going because there is something this guy knows they at a point they were at the same level but while this guy was praising his way to the next dimension this one was complaining listen let me teach you something the bible says in acts chapter 16 listen that paul and silas they held them bound four guards even if the chains break those guards will kill you the Bible says they prayed and they sang. It was allowed and the prisoners had them. Is it in your Bible? All of a sudden, the Bible says there was an earthquake. It hit the prison. This is the part I like. It says, and all doors opened. How many doors? It's in your Bible. It says when they sang and the earthquake came, all doors opened can praise your way out of any pain Lord you are so good you are worthy of all my praise Lord you are so good you are exalted as the Lord most high Lord you are so good you are worthy of all my praise Lord, you are so good. Just hurry up, sir. So sit down, sit down, sit down. So we'll hurry up. I tell you, this thing fired my spirit myself.
So after 10 years, he's still rising. As if the devil does not exist. I watched a video of Bishop Oyedeko this morning preparing his congregation. That was before their 35th anniversary. 35 years of living as if Satan does not exist. And we had a ministration on Sunday. The 35th anniversary was this was the last Sunday. I made sure I streamed and I followed before I went for the meeting. While I was bathing, I took my laptop. It was streaming so that I would hear from the bathroom in our hotel room before I went out. Kenneth Copeland was preaching. And then I was listening. Before Kenneth Copeland came, they danced their way around the stage to the shame of the devil. And I saw his wife, who once died, but now alive, dancing together, strong and alive. Our mother was dancing to the shame of the devil. When you dance before your enemy, you frustrate them. Please, stop wasting your tears. You have cried before every other person but God. I forbid you from crying before men. There is nothing you are going through that is new under the sun. Please hear me. Until you find the key that opens that door, you may remain in that captivity forever. Number what? The law of mastery and competence. Let's hurry up. Proverbs 18 verse 16. The fourth law I want to teach you. Secrets of the kingdom. The law of mastery and competence. Proverbs 18 verse 16. The gift of a man makes room for him. Please come. I have to use them. Three of you, many three of you, just come. Watch this. I want to illustrate this scripture. Come. Watch this. Call this the table of greatness and the table of life. The space is already full. There is no space for anyone. Are we together? Anybody who must go to the table of greatness must show what he's taking along with him. So the Bible says, the concept of something for nothing is arm robbery. There must be something you must carry, your contribution to life. And here's how the Bible puts it. The gift of a man, watch this, will make room for him. Are you seeing that? There was no space, but your gift will push and create a space for you. The key to mediocrity is to want everything and contribute nothing. Mediocrity and hardship in life stems from a mentality that wants everything done for you but with no contribution to life. Your relevance is tied to your contribution to the purposes of God and the betterment of humanity. Are we together? I was teaching at a Kingdom Wealth Summit in Joss. And I said, any man that ever says preachers should not be rich, God will punish him. You know, there are people who, especially when they look at some of us who are young, they just say, forget about all these young boys. So they are all idiots. Just leave them. They know what they are doing. And they give an idea like these people are fraudulent. They are drug barons. They are this and that and that or 419 people. No. The measure of your worth and your greatness in life, hear me please, is tied to your contribution. Are we together? You pay a carpenter 5,000 naira for fixing your door because that's how much you perceive his contribution to be. But you pay a pilot 500,000 from the day he graduates he start collecting 500,000. You know why? Because 175 people are trusting their destinies for one hour. And he's the one driving it. And they are paying him and saying, you better make sure you read well. To carry the destiny of presidents, prime ministers, royalties, 
politicians flying is something that you can't do anything about you just pray if the pilot sleeps or he's careless or something happens you are gone so they pay him five hundred thousand for taking that risk when they are carrying out a neurosurgery you pay between 3.5 to maybe 8 million because of the enormity of what that doctor is doing are we together yes listen our rewards in life will always be in exact measure to our contributions and our service i know why god is blessing me as a preacher it's not because i'm preaching the gospel it's because i'm adding value to lives my value may be spiritual if you think it's easy to cast out devils try it if you think it's easy to look at a sick body and say be healed and he goes to the hospital and finds out that hiv has left him you do it let me tell you if your anointing is only for um children fruit of the womb is enough to employ you for your lifetime because that is that is a contribution now the question i want to ask you is every man can know where you stand by how much you are contributing is wickedness to demand millions when your contribution has not matched that level there's no point praying are we together yes as i stay in the secret place and i learn more about the mysteries of the kingdom i am equipped by grace to contribute more and as i contribute more different kinds of rewards come back now that's not my motivation that's why you don't pay me for teaching but whether i sell it or it's given free i am authorized to be rewarded listen your greatness in life is tied is a direct measure of your contribution if at any point in your life you are not satisfied with your level as far as greatness is concerned then it means you have to do something to your contribution whose life is becoming better because you are alive every day i get up someone's life is changing because i'm alive and you wonder why somebody will bless me is that no wickedness you type a letter for a man for one month he gives you hundred thousand you call yourself a secretary i'm changing the mindsets of people and changing the mindsets of their generation and someone sows one million and you say it's wickedness think about it and we have all these these junk people who carry typewriter carry their laptops and say men of god are wearing this and that and doing this and not doing anything because to them they think we're just joking on stage and the person who is talking did not sell his android device to give mission field but he's saying the man of god should sell his watch or his car let me tell you the fivefold ministry is secondary to no other ministry on earth the second most noble call after the call of ministry is the call of a monarch then presidents of whatever nation the president is only there for four years after four years he's stripped of his authority and relevance only a monarch is close to a true man of god irrelevance please make no mistakes to think genuine men of god are nuisance to society go to a seminar and find out how much you will pay for what i'm teaching you now and see the millions of naira that you will have to pay for your mindset being corrected and those guys do not have the grace the anointing equivalent to help you our greatness in life is not measured by connection it's measured by our contribution so you can know right where you are seated how far you are in life and not be angry when you see another person I've not slept I've not slept properly I think maybe in the last one or two weeks because we've been traveling it was about a week since I was in Zaria we returned back yesterday returned back had to just take my bath and rush for school of ministry 
was with them till in the evening and I returned back this morning had a lot of things to do we are supposed to be off to the airport tomorrow to Ibadan but then I was happy hearing that um, the program has been shifted that's contribution brothers and sisters that's contribution a Jimmy's wife made cake for me she makes cakes beautiful cakes that's her contribution I will pay her because I cannot bake it the day I'm tired of paying her I learn how to bake it are we together let me tell you why many people are poor in the kingdom you are not contributing anything so whoever you must receive from you have to give something are we together watch this please learn this this is a little money let me use it for an example I have this money watch this this is life whoever can contribute to life must benefit from it financially and otherwise I'm just using this to represent fulfillment are we together now they pay me salary please give me back they pay me no 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 listen listen they pay me salary are we together I'm not providing any service so I go to someone to fix my car he's contributing he takes from the salary I go to the market woman who had enough sense to risk herself and sit down in the market I pay her are we together now all kinds of things are happening to me I now because I'm not a practitioner of the word I'm falling sick I'm not typing I think pastors are idiot what happens the devourer is destroying me the remaining part of the salary goes to the doctor watch this are we listening what is it to me nothing this is a measure of how much I've contributed to life nothing that's why it always finishes are we together there's no magic about satisfaction and greatness the day I create something that forces him to give me back my money he will need it so he will come to me and give me back something I'm doing will make her bring it back something I'm doing will make it bring it back what is that something if you don't have it stop wondering why you are poor our rewards in life both in terms of money honor and the sense of fulfillment is tied to your contribution I will never feel inferior in life because if I do not carry any other thing I have an anointing I have an anointing that the nations need and they will need it forever it is needed in the morning the afternoon and the evening the precepts of the kingdom that have been communicated to me there is a demand for it that's why you are gathered here that's why not even the rain took you back to your house are we together it's a measure of how much you need this please hear me begin to sharpen your gifts and abilities and tell yourself I'm rising to that position of greatness I will take something in my hands that will veto my background and open the doors of greatness for me is God speaking to someone now there are doctors here the moment they graduate for those who are student doctors there is a job for them because the amount of frustration from disobeying the word of God has increased their market in the num the amount of tranquilizers that are consumed every time high blood pressure now affects teenagers good business for doctors darkness shall cover the earth what do you have if I call you right now please three of you stand up one two three and I tell you what do you have to contribute to life that will make you relevant it is wickedness to want to stand here with nothing to contribute so I come to you and you give me the word of God and change my mind you are blessed I come to you and you give me a sense of leadership and innovation you are blessed I come to you and um, maybe you solve my security problems and then you come to me and I said don't worry I'm, I'm here I mean it's just a, it's just a political thing that's wickedness listen your greatness is tied to your gifts the gift of a man when 
discovered when refined please sit down and when deployed will make room for him scriptures cannot be broken has nothing to do with background has nothing to do with age has nothing to do with gender has nothing to do with territorial limitations your gift has equal value in every territory i love people I admire them but not intimidated by any because the gift of God in me does not need refrigeration I don't need electricity for it to come up are we together if you go to the filling station and there's no light you will kill there because they need electricity are we together now if you want a photocopying machine and light goes off and there's no gen nothing for you but bring a demon possessed person whether I'm sleeping or I'm, I'm awake, that spirit is living at that point. Bring somebody whose mind is messed up. I can get him born again and teach him the precepts of the kingdom. That's value. You may not be called into the fivefold ministry. Are we together? But your value will change the money in your hand. Your value will change everything in your life. Please write it down. I have an assignment this week to discover every gift God has put in me and to serve my generation with that gift and exit myself out of the realm of inferiority and pain and competition we compete with ourselves we hate ourselves there's no need for that there is enough space in fact life is still needing great men Are we together? Life is still needing great men. There are people. Thank you. There are people who are looking for this. Die hard. There was a day we looked for this. It never came. I only wanted 30 naira out of this. It didn't come. Because I was not contributing anything substantial. Yet I wanted to be blessed. It was against the law of God. But today it cannot stop coming to me. Even if I drive it, it will not go. Why? Value. For as long as there is one devil on earth, I will not be poor. For as long as there is one person's mind that needs to be straightened, it's called value. Please hear me. Do you know the Holy Ghost is within you and his presence makes you valuable? The presence of the Holy Ghost gives you the ability to provide supernatural solutions to different dimensions of life's problem. You should be fulfilled but you watch how many men are frustrated in our society they get up in the morning and they are angry bus conductors civil servants who are angry going to do a job they don't like everybody angry we vent it at our husbands vent it at our wives on serious pastors vent it at their members we're going to stop here and pray the gift of a man makes room we'll continue next week please rise up and let's pray he's the holy ghost spirit of the living god he's the holy ghost scepter of the king of kings he's the holy ghost seal of the age to come you're changing everything in obedience Sing it one more time from the depth of your heart. You're the Holy Ghost, Spirit of the living God. You're the Holy Ghost, Scepter of the King of Kings. You're the Holy Ghost. point number one lord i'm leaving this level forever on the strength of the mysteries you are giving me lift your voice and pray i leave this level forever 
I leave this level forever there is a level of the anointing that I need to step into total surrender is the key to that level there is a level of relevance for the kingdom that I need to step into your value your contribution is the key to that level there is a level of transformation that I need in my life the key is to be renewed in the spirit of your mind to have your ideologies and paradigms changed make sure you are praying hallelujah hallelujah i like you to pray and say father from tonight anything that exalts itself above you in my life no matter what it is i bring it down to its rightful place lift your voice and pray it could be ministry it could be business lord i come against that thing stopping the anointing from multiplying in my life stopping my ranking in the spirit pray pray every idol taking the place of God in my life I come against it I come against it I come against it hallelujah hallelujah I like you to pray and challenge every paradigm he said pulling down every stronghold stronghold something here is creating imaginary giants in your life something here is creating imaginary giants when light comes you will find out that it was never a giant i like you to cry and say lord beyond my culture change my mind beyond my exposure as a nigerian may your word challenge my paradigms my ideology that came from my failures that came from my background that came from my village my african uh, the, the fact that I'm a, I'm a nigerian the limitation that came with my territory As we behold him in a mirror we are changed we are changed from glory to glory hallelujah hallelujah the final prayer point you are going to call for every dormant gift in you some of you are sitting in an ocean but you are begging for a cup of water where is that gift that will end poverty in my life where is that gift that will end inferiority oh god reveal it in my life lift your voice and pray lift your voice and pray that ability of the spirit our rewards in life will always be in exact measure to our contribution our rewards in life will always be in exact measure to our contribution our rewards in life our rewards in life our relevance in life our greatness in life will always be in exact measure to our contribution
please lift your hands as I pray for you. Hallelujah. I've said it again and again. Koinonia will build you to, be, to become a complete kingdom ambassador. Not just that you are anointed and your finances are suffering. Not just that you are doing well financially and failing in relationships. Not just that you are doing well in relationships and failing intellectually. There can be complete balanced growth. You can be a multi-millionaire for the kingdom, yet not carried away by its influence in your mind. And you can be passionate about the kingdom and what it represents. Having a personal relationship with God and then excelling in family, excelling in leadership, becoming an agent of national transformation. It says, Savior shall arise out of Zion. And he said, they shall judge the Mount of Esau. I pray for you in the name that is above all names and by the power of the Holy Ghost the kind of encounter you have never had with the Holy Ghost I pray in this season step into that level of encounter step into that level of encounter step into that level of encounter an encounter that will take your prayer life your word life to a dimension you have never seen i release upon you the grace for that encounter number two i pray for you the level of transformation that it takes to crumble the giants before you let me tell you many giants we so honor are imaginary they are not real the level of transformation it takes for you to rise to a point where you do what has never been done in your family you do what has never been done in your lineage receive the grace for that kind of transformation in the name of jesus christ listen hear me that spirit that keeps telling you you have to be like them everybody was a failure you are also like them i like you to shout no way shout it no way listen my bible says when men say there is a casting down for you you will say there is a lifting up there is something you know that can take you out of your background the last prayer for you and i'm praying this from the depth of my spirit the hands that lifted you will uphold you to the end you will not be afraid listen hear me ordinary men found what god put in them and it changed the course of their lives this is one of the testimonies you probably would not need me except for what he has put in me like he did to me i pray whatever god must do to you to bring out that anointing that grace that illumination that will make you an international figure to the shame of the devil that anointing please lift your hand something is coming upon you now i want to release a grace get ready right now at the count of three the grace, the unction, right now. Receive it. Receive that grace now. Now, now. Right now. Shabakata. Receive that grace. Wherever you are. Inside, outside. An impartation. Let deep call on to deep. That grace, that grace. Your potentials. Your abilities. The anointing of the Holy Ghost. That distinguishes you. In the name of Jesus. I command it I command it I command it I release it right now right now I command it Shakatabaya Mandekepretia no more failure no more failure I take you out by prophecy out of the realm of mediocrity out of the realm of failure
I speak over your destiny. Whoever has ignored your grace, I stand under this apostolic anointing and I pray your life will force them to swallow their words. They told Nathaniel, can anything good come out of Nazareth? I prophesy over someone here. Quarter to shame. May your gift bail you out. Quarter to shame. May your gift bail you out. Hallelujah. Lift your hands and give Jesus thanks. Lord, we give you thanks. We'll continue next week. There are still other powerful principles that I have to share with you. You know why I'm taking time to teach you this? Brothers and sisters, it says they are life to those who find them. When you find it and grace is supplied upon you to walk with it, you will, you will be afraid of what your life will become. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Very quickly, I know that our time is spent, but just be patient. In about five minutes, we're done. Please, all those worshiping with us for the first time, aside from our daddy and mommy, I'd like us to honor them. These are David Dam's parents. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let me say something. It's a little secret. The first time I met them, I was blown away by the warmth, the love. I mean, when you meet them, you don't want to get out of that environment again. I'm telling you. I met them in Joss and I was looking at David Dam. And in my mind, I said, no wonder. No wonder this guy is this confident and happy. Who would not be confident with parents like this? Some of us escape jungles, we climb high waters, rebuke statements that should not be said to be where we are today. But when you have parents this loving, they deserve double honor. Bless you, ma. Bless you, sir. Thank you. Hallelujah. Please, aside from them, all those who are worshiping with us for the first time, um, I'd like you to come here quickly. Okay, before we do that, just give me one minute. Where are all the Abuja people? Please come up quickly so that you receive fresh fire for the next level. Please, quickly, in one minute. Let's honor them. Let's celebrate them. We're one big family. There's no space. They can come up here. Please, quickly, quickly. We have five minutes to be out of here. Stretch your hands, everyone, and pray for them. Please come up. Just our Abuja people first. Just come up. Line up here quickly. You came all the way with a desire in your heart. Let me pray for you. Please, quickly, quickly, in one minute, so that we can pray. When Saul met Samuel, he was never the same. Please pray in one minute. You are about to receive something you will take back by the grace of God. You will step into a strange level of grace. As I lay my hands on you, an anointing will come upon you. Please, I want you to believe it. Something is already happening to you. There is a strong presence of angels here. Hallelujah. At time, hold your hands together and lift it up. Let me pray for you. Please lift it up high to the heavens. I'm about to release an anointing upon you. Let this anointing take you to new levels. At the count of three. One, two, three. Fire. Take it. Take it. Take it. I lay hands on you. Take it right now. Fire. Take it right now. 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 Fresh fire. Fresh fire. Fresh fire. Fresh fire. Fresh fire.
prophesy upon you in the name of Jesus go to your campus set it on fire in the name of Jesus Christ I activate upon you the presence of God that is upon this house carry it physically right now right now carry it physically that mantle that mantle that mantle that is upon this house I release it upon you that mantle that is upon this house I release it upon you go with it and excel hallelujah I call you blessed in the name of Jesus every miracle you came here desiring it is yours right now in Jesus name those who can rise take them to their seats those who cannot just leave them here we're about to round up please God bless you appreciate them please quickly if they are under the anointing just leave them just give me five minutes quickly I needed to do this to honor them they came all the way so that they can take something tangible koinonia is a place of encounter hallelujah you're worshiping with us for the first time aside from them now any other person worshiping with us for the first time please make your way to the front here the altar is congested but make your way to the front hallelujah you are the first to come so i will lay hands on you i will lay hands on the rest receive that fire right now in the name of the lord jesus christ grace for you please every other person make your way to the front there's a reason why we ask you to come it's not to waste your time believe me there is a grace when you come here you just need to come once and that grace must speak in your life Stretch your hands, saints of God. This is Koinonia, a place of encounter, a place of miracles, a place of breakthrough. God is doing supernatural things. The kingdom of God has been allowed to find expression in this territory. Pray for them. The people praying for you are anointed. I want you to receive it. We bless you with the favor that is upon this house. We bless you with the gift of access. We bless you with intimacy grace to know God grace to love God grace to be so passionate about spiritual things that nothing in this life can take the place of God receive that grace in the name of Jesus hallelujah thank you for coming once again this is koinonia hallelujah listen please this is not our usual venue we meet at Christ Gospel Church just opposite second equa from next week we'll be back there you're welcome to worship with us again and again at the end of the service a media stand is just right um, by my right here you together with all those who have come from far please go to our media stand update your collection of our teachings and you can take them back be a blessing to others and then be blessed by them the Lord bless and honor you the Lord increase you in the name of Jesus I'd like you to quickly follow the young lady waving her hands we are going to welcome you more warmly outside and have your details the Lord honor and bless you. Honor them, Koinonia. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing, keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye.